Hello, everyone. My name is Jamia Furbush. I'm a program specialist within the Division of Community Assistance within the Office of Community Services, OCS. And I'm very excited to welcome you to our fourth webinar for the Federal Fiscal Year 2023 CSBG State Plan Series. Today, we will be covering sections 10 through 13 through 15. Before we get started, I would like to remind everyone of the following. Each participant has been muted on entry and we ask that everyone remains on mute throughout the webinar. Next, if you have any questions, please utilize the Q&A function on Zoom. We will have time to address those questions at the end of the webinar. And this Q&A box is what the presenters will be monitoring. Lastly, this webinar is being recorded. The recording along with the copy of the slides will be posted to the OCS CSBG webinars page found through the link posted in the chat. I would like to take a moment to introduce who in the Division of Community Assistance you will be hearing from today. First, we will hear opening remarks from DCA Senior Advisor, Josetta Alexander, followed by material presented on the CSBG State Plan by me, Jessica Kane, and Norris Phillip. Today's webinar will begin with important reminders, followed by an overview of sections 10 through 15 of the Federal Fiscal Year 2023 CSBG State Plan. Throughout the presentation, you will hear information on revisions to the plan, as well as important reminders. We will end by providing you with contact information, an opportunity to ask questions, and important announcements from the federal office. I like, now like to welcome Josetta Alexander. Ms. Alexander, you're muted. Thank you, Jamia, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for part four of our FY 2023 CSBG State Plan webinar series. As a reminder, the state plan serves as an application for CSBG funding and provides a roadmap detailing how each state will administer CSBG funds in support of continued progression towards meeting the three national program goals, which are to reduce poverty, empower low-income families and individuals to become self-sufficient, and revitalize low-income communities. The current CSBG plan has been revised to provide additional clarity and conciseness. As mentioned, today's webinar will focus on sections 10 through 13 of the plan. This webinar applies to all states, whether you have a one-year plan or a two-year plan. Before I turn it over to Jessica, Jimmy, and Norris, I would like to remind the network again that the CSBG Training and Technical Assistance Needs Assessment Survey is open now and will close tomorrow, Friday, July 8th. The survey results will inform OCS's training and technical assistance learning agenda and will help determine how CSBG training and technical assistance funding is utilized. We have seen a great response so far from the network and we will continue to encourage multiple staff at each agency to respond to the survey, especially if staff have different TNTA needs. This will allow OCS to gather diverse and complete responses about your most pressing training and technical need assistance needs, excuse me. Thank you. I will now turn it over to Jamia, Jessica, and Norris to walk you through sections 10 through 15 of the CSBG state plan. Thanks, Josetta. And now for a couple of important reminders. Most importantly, and why we are here today, all fiscal year 2023 CSBG state plans are due by Thursday, September 1st, 2022 and should cover the federal fiscal year, meaning October 1st, 2022 to September 30th, 2023. As a reminder, the CSBG state plan is a critical document for both state and federal oversight of the block grant. It is strongly recommended that states, territories, and tribes review their state plan annually to ensure their program is being administered in accordance with the changing times. Lastly, Grant Solutions is now open. 
you are able to access the state plan and start submitting SF-424Ms. A reminder that the following state grant recipients are required to submit a new CSPG state plan for fiscal year 2023. For those submitting a one year or the first year of a two year plan, you will need to complete and submit an entire new plan as well as the SF-424M. If you are submitting a two year plan, provide information for both federal fiscal years that are covered by the CSPG state plan. Please note that we, ha that we had a small incorrection in the previous webinars Indiana is a part of Group A, not Group B. The following state grant recipients are required to submit an SF-424M via grantsolutions.gov. For those who are submitting for the second year of a two-year plan, you will need to submit an SF-424M separately. You also have the option to update or revise your plan. OCS suggests only doing so for major revisions, such as, but not limited to, making a change to the state plans the state's plan for usage of funds, significant proposed changes to state CSPG policies and or procedures, and or revising the state's organizational standards, policies, procedures, and assessment. I will now turn it over to Jamia. Thank you, Jessica. Let's start our review of section 10, monitoring corrective action and fiscal controls. The purpose of this section is to describe the planned monitoring of eligible entities and the associated procedures and policies. This section covers four areas. The monitoring process, including the proposed schedule for plans to monitor reviews, monitoring policies, and initial monitoring reports. Corrective action, termination and reduction of funding, including closing findings, quality improvement plans, also known as CLIPS, and the assurance on funding reduction or termination. Policies on designation, de-designation, and redesignation. And lastly, fiscal controls and audits and cooperative, excuse me, cooperation assurance, including fiscal controls and accounting procedures, single audit management decisions, and the assurance on federal investigations. <clears throat> A reminder that the monitoring of eligible entities, including corrective action and the policies for movement of funding in the state, is key to ensuring CSBG funds are used properly and that funds remain with the communities in need. We encourage state grant recipients to ensure their policies and procedures are thorough and comprehensive to help address any issues that arise during monitoring. Further, be strategic in your planning to ensure strengthening of the local CSBG network by seeking additional understanding of and taking appropriate actions when struggles have been identified or by setting up a new eligible entity with promising practices. As always, this section provides the opportunity for information on any performance management adjustments made to this section based on the analysis of past performance and feedback from the network. With regards to revisions made to section 10, most changes were to character limits for narratives or general language, which did not result in significant changes to the plan. The most important change to section 10 was made to item 10.13, where an additional question was added under sub item 10.13a, federal investigation policies. This will be discussed by my colleague Norris in an upcoming slide. Lastly, the title for section 10.14 was changed to monitoring procedures performance management adjustment for additional clarity. Before discussing item 10.13a, I wanted to discuss items 10.8 through 10.10 regarding the policies on eligible entity designation, de-designation, and redesignation. During the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been a significant impact on the capacity of eligible entities <clears throat> to provide services. And we have seen many questions regarding designation, de-designation, and redesignation. It is important that state grant recipients take this time to clarify regulations, policies, and or procedures regarding these processes and that this information is easily accessible by the federal government. Most important, 
If these policies and procedures are not included in your state regulations or policies, this section is an opportunity to develop a procedure or process for these actions. This will ensure that the state policies and or procedures are in line with the CSPG Act and that the federal government can assist in providing clarity. One topic that has come up frequently is redesignation. Note that redesignation implies that an entity that is already designated is now also serving the area of a previously designated entity. This is different than a merger as they are not absorbing another eligible entity. If a redesignation is made permanent, a formula the redistribution is required. The redesignation may also be temporary until a new entity for that area can be designated. For more information on what is required under CSPG Act, it's found under Section 676A. I will now turn it over to Norris to discuss Section Item 10.13A. Thank you, Jamia. As noted on the screen, OCS added an additional question under item 10.13. The question asks if there are state procedures for permitting and cooperating with federal investigations included in the state monitoring policies that were attached under 10.2. OCS added this question to verify whether CSPG state lead agencies have policies in place. Further, this information is often verified during DCA monitoring visits. And if the CSPG state lead agency indicates yes, the CSPG financial analysts can more easily access this information. This policy is not required for the state to have in place, but is considered a promising practice by OCS and is something we often ask for during monitoring visits. OCS is not requesting that the CSPG state lead agencies take any additional action. Thank you. Thanks, Norris. The purpose of Section 11 Eligible Entity Tripartite Board is to collect information on how the state grant recipient ensures adherence to the requirement under Section 676B of the CSPG Act. Information requested includes how states verify eligible entities are meeting the requirements, how often updates are required from the eligible entities, the Tripartite Board representation assurance, which links to the corresponding assurance under item 14.10, and whether the state permits the use of alternatives for ensuring decision-making and participation by low-income individuals. Since 1968, local community action agencies have been required to have tripartite governing boards to gain and retain designation as eligible, as eligible entities and to receive CSVG funding. Tripartite boards remain a commonly discussed topic. State lead agencies can use this section to promote continued viability and effectiveness of eligible entities through appropriately constituted and well-functioning tripartite boards. It is for this reason that this section should be completed thoroughly to further detail state lead agencies' practices for ensuring tripartite board compliance. It is also encouraged that the state grant recipients explore the addition of clarity regarding alternative representations. There were no significant other significant changes to Section 11. The purpose of Section 12, Individual and Community Income Eligibility Requirements, is to identify the grant recipient's eligibility threshold for services in the state and their policies, procedures, and general practices for ensuring adherence by eligible entities to this threshold. This covers the following service areas, individual and family services, general and short-term services, and community targeted services. Of note, general short-term services are described as those with limited intake procedures and or where individual income verification is not possible or practical. An example of this is emergency food assistance programs. Community targeted services are those that provide a community-wide benefit, such as the development of community assets or the building of partnerships with other organizations. For community targeted services, the focus is not income verification, but how the state assures these services target and benefit low income communities. This section is important in that it assures there is a proper adherence to and a documentation by eligible entities for meeting income and community eligibility requirements. As such, and what OCS has seen as promising practices for this process, 
it is important that the grant recipient have clear and thorough policies, procedures, and or practices for assisting eligible entities in this process, especially for services where income verification is not straightforward. Of note, the option to increase the income eligibility threshold to 200% of the federal poverty level expires on September 30th, 2022. After September 30th, 2022, the maximum threshold will, threshold will return to 125% of the federal poverty level. Lastly, with regards to revisions made to Section 12, most changes were to character limits for narratives or general language, which do not result in a significant change to the plan. The purpose of Section 13, Results-Oriented Management and Accountability, also known as ROMA, the system is to collect information related to assurances under Section 676B-12 regarding performance management systems and Section 676B-11 regarding community action plans and assessments. Under Section 676B-12, the state must assure that they and all eligible entities participate in one of three options, the ROMA system, another performance management system for which the secretary facilitated development of, or an alternative system for measuring performance and promoting self-sufficiency, family stability, and community revitalization. This is more clearly laid out in response to items 13.1 through 13.4, and includes how the state will support the eligible entities in using ROMA or an alter alternative performance management system as well. <clears throat> Items 13.5 and 13.6 pertain to the assurance under 676B11 that the state will secure a community action plan, which will include a community needs assessment from each eligible entity and the state as a condition of receipt of funding. Beyond an explicit requirement under the CSBG Act, both categories of assurances are important to the administering of the grant as they will help ensure the grant recipient has engaged thoughtfully in developing their performance management system and ensuring there is a clear process for the development of community action plans and implementation of community needs assessments, all of which will ensure the provision of services will be in line with community needs. With regards to revisions made to section 13, most changes were to character limits for narratives or general language, which did not result in significant changes to the plan. Section 14, CSBG programmatic assurance and information narrative includes narrative responses for the assurances required under section 676B of the CSBG Act. More specifically, there will be required narrative responses along with referrals to previously completed sections. There is also a final checkbox to confirm the CSBG authorized official has certified the assurances. For section 15, federal certifications, the state CSBG authorized official is required to check the boxes after each certification. With regards to revisions made to section 14 and 15, Minor changes were made to character limits for narratives or to general language, which do not result in significant changes to the plan. That concludes our review of section 10 through 15 of the CSBG state plan. Please reach out to the DCA office for any program assistance or technical or and or technical oil DC assistance in the completion of your fiscal year 2023 CSBG state plan. We have listed contact information here, and you can also find contact information on the CSB webpage. If emailing for assistance, please always remember to cc csbgstate at acf.hhs.gov. Now we will utilize the Q&A pod to answer questions. I'm going to ask Norris, Monique, and Josetta to turn their cameras on, please. So our first question is in regards to section 10.1. Do we need to list agencies who will not be mentioned over the next two fifth federal fiscal years? Uh, 
I can answer that. So um, yes, we would want that you that you do it for all states. The idea is that you're filling out an entire two-year plan. So you should answer every question where there's an option for year two information as though you're answering it fully and completely. So we do we are asking for you to even provide the information. There is an option to say that you're not monitoring them that during this uh, fiscal year or next fiscal year, but yes, you should fill out the monitoring status for every um, eligible entity within your state. Great, thank you, Monique. The next question is, do we need to submit a state plan letter of intent? And if so, to whose attention? I'll ask Monique again if she... Okay, yeah, there, um, the state plan letter of intent was only a one-time thing, so we no longer need uh, for you to submit that. Um, just submit your CSPG state plan uh, by September 1st. Great, thank you. And then our, um, another question is regarding section 12, so eligible entities uh, or income eligibility. Are you recommending that the income eligibility agency document cover all three types of eligibility? So individual and family, general short-term and community targeted services. Um, I will give a quick answer to that. And for me, I would say yes, but I will also ask my colleague Norris if he has anything to add to that. Um, please feel free to step in from, but the short answer would be yes. I believe there's a question for each separate um, category as well on the state plan. I'm sorry, what was the question again? So it's regarding the um, income eligibility. Should the agency document cover all three types of eligibility? So the individual and family for general and short-term services and for community targeted services. And Monique, what was your suggestion? Yes. My short answer was like, yes, they should. Um, that has been the document should cover all three types of eligibility. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that has been common practice that we've seen in the past. Okay, so yeah, the the short answer is yes, and the state plan should have um, a section to answer for each each different category as well. So the last question is on the new template section one point one. It does not allow me to select fiscal year twenty three and fiscal year twenty four. The options provided are fiscal year 2022 20, and 2023. So that might be an OLDC question. Yeah, so thanks for bringing that to our attention. Um, we did fix that. So if it's still showing that way, um, we'll fix it on the back end, but just continue proceeding with filling out your plan. And if there's, if we have any issues with making the update, we'll let you know. Um, I'll make sure I jot down your name. Um, is asking where um, the questions are located in the state plan, and they should be in, under section 12 as well. Yeah, so I'm going to actually bring up the state plan to make sure that we can answer. Okay. That While we do that, oh, I see a, a short question in the um, chat. For those whose plan is due September 2023, will, we pro will you provide these same webinars? Um, the answer is we'll, we'll do, I believe we do a series, the webinar series each um, cycle, but these also will be recorded and saved on our webpage. Yeah, and the only thing I'll add to that is just to be specific, this is for the fiscal year 2023 CSPG state plan. So the next one we would do is next spring or fall for fiscal year 2024. And what, we'll, what we're trying to do each year is expand on the previous webinar. So while these recordings will be available, we'll also do additional webinars based on what we hear from you. So please complete the TNTA needs assessment survey um, because that's what helps guide these webinars. Um, to go back to the question about the eligibility. So 12.3 does say 
is where you provide a narrative about those income eligibility thresholds. So it is just one question. And we ask that within that question, you provide the information for all three. Again, the CSVG state plan is a tool for you to use to administer CSVG in your state. So something may not be, um, and Jessica, we don't see the presentation anymore, but it something, <laughs> something may not be um, within your policies and procedures or your state statutes or regulations. And so we're saying to include that here in your state plan. And if you do have it included, then you just want to summarize it here or maybe focus on the process of how um, that's done rather than just the, the insurance. So that's what we're looking for. How are you administering these things on the verification for that and providing you a place as a state CSPG lead administrator to provide those policies and procedures within your state plan so that as things arise, you have a guidance or a tool to go to to say, okay, this is how we do things. So, um, and, and to also learn from those things. So I'm not sure if that fully answers the question, but we can continue talking about it online. If you have any questions that are not answered during, these pre during the presentation, again, follow up with your CSPG program specialist and we'll make sure that we provide you as thorough of a response as possible and include that information in future webinars or manuals or guidelines. Thanks, Mike. Our next question is for those states in group B, when is the SF424M due? And that's at, uh, September 1st, 2022 as well. Um, Vita wants to know who she can follow up. I would follow up with your um, identified program specialist and they can help answer your questions regarding section 12. If that's correct, when you give you agree. Okay, and then Nikki Frazier posted the, um, in the chat, you can see that she posted the link to our webinar series. And um, at this time, um, the all recordings and webinars are being finalized, and so they will be on the website by next week. There's one more question in the chat, Jessica. When submitting the state plan, is a separate SF-424 needed, or is it still included with the first section of the plan? So when you're submitting a full, an entire plan, I'm, I'm assuming, is a separate SF-424 needed? And the answer to that is no, um, it does remain the cover page. So if you are submitting a new state plan, you do not need to do the SF-424M separately. You would just submit it as part of your CSPG state plan. Great, thank you. Okay. Again, if you have any more questions, you can reach out to your program specialist or the um, OLDC. Um, Monique and Nikki can also help with OLDC questions. Um, and. I thank you for all of your questions. And I thank my colleagues for fielding questions. And now we're gonna move on to announcements. So there will be one more webinar in the Federal Fiscal Year 2023 CSBG State Plan Webinar Series. The final webinar will be on Wednesday, July 13th, 2022, starting at 3.30 p.m. During which we will provide an OLDC refresher and review demos and information provided in the previous webinars. A reminder that all presentations will be uploaded to the CSBG website and should be available by next week. And if you haven't followed us yet, please follow us, follow OCS on Twitter at OCS underscore ACF GOV. OCS has started using a new electronic mailing service that will allow communication of information in a timely manner and help collect analytics that will inform outreach efforts in the future. As OCS transitions to this service, please continue to check your junk and spam folders for future communications. If a communication goes to your junk or spam mail, please mark the sender as safe to avoid this happening in the future. You can contact Monique Alcantara and Nikki Frazier Curry if you have any questions. And I will now hand it over to Monique to share important communications. Thank you, Jamia. <clears throat> Sorry. 
So um, as I mentioned in the previous webinar, we have been releasing quite a few communications in the past two weeks. We did send them via email using our new communication system that Gia just spoke about, and they are also posted on our website. I just included that link in the chat so you can see all of our policy and guidance. Um, we really do try to space out our communications. However, this month has just been full of announcements and changes, and specifically in the past two weeks, and we thought it was important to keep the network informed. So as Shamia mentioned, if you do not see a CSPG communication within your inbox, please check your drunk or spam mail, or please email myself and or Nikki so we can make sure that you are on that listserv. And you can always check our website as they are always posted there at the time that we release the email as well. Um, particular, oh, just go to that, sorry. Just please pay attention to 39 and uh, Action Chess Middle 04, which includes important information about your CSPG state plan. Um, and those were both released last week. Thank you, Monique. As a final reminder, the CSBG Training and Assistance Needs Assessment Survey is open now and will close tomorrow, Friday, July 8th. We appreciate your participation and feedback in strengthening the TNTA that we provide. Again, thank you so much to those who have already provided your thoughtful replies to the survey. We're now going to switch gears a little bit and discuss the CSBG performance management and the reporting timelines. I'll pass it back to Monique to give you an update on fiscal years 2020 and 2021 CSBG annual reports. Thank you, Josetta. I would like to take a few moments to provide an overview of the CSBG performance management, specifically the reporting aspect. We are switching gears, so I just want you to know that we are looking at the overall view of everything that's coming up in the uh, next few months. Reporting is a key aspect, but not the only aspect of the CSPG performance management framework. OCS's goal is to support you in completing your reporting, and we thought that giving you an overview of the timeline for the upcoming months will be helpful. As you may be aware, we are working with you to finalize your data for the fiscal year 2020 CSPG annual report. In March and April of this year, you receive the review memo from your CSPG annual report contact. I'll go into a bit more detail on this on the next slide, but essentially the next step is for you to submit your revised data into grant solutions. We then have the fiscal year 2021 federal review. NASCAS is currently doing a quality assurance review of modules two and four, which will be followed by the federal review, while program specialists are currently reviewing module one. OCS will send the review memos for modules one, two, and four starting in August and into September. Then continuing to September, CSVG state plans are due for group A on September 1. States will also start returning their completed fiscal year 2021 review memos. Moving into October, the start of the federal fiscal year, states will continue returning their completed fiscal year 2021 review memos. OCS will provide feedback to the applicable state to the federal fiscal year 2023 CSVG state plan and OCS will work with the state to submit revised data as needed. Lastly, in November, OCS will release smart forms for the fiscal year 2022 CSPG annual report and open grant solutions for fiscal year 2022 CSPG annual reporting. There is a lot happening in the next few months. And again, we just wanted to give you an overview. We hope that this overview helps you in your planning and preparation during the next few months. And ultimately we are trying to um, get to the place where we are not reviewing multiple years data at the same time. That being said, for the remainder of July, we really want to focus on the finalization of the fiscal year 2020 CSPG annual reports. First, we really do want to thank you all for your efforts thus far and for responding and are giving us status updates. We really appreciate it. As of right now, there are 22 states that still need to return their review memo to the CSPG annual report contact. We ask that if you have not already done so, please complete this by July 15th. Upon receipt, we'll review, let you know if we have any questions and give you the go ahead to start submitting your revised data and grant solutions. We currently have 31 states that are ready to start submitting their data into grant solutions. Please expect an email from your CSVG annual report contact by the end of next week, giving you explicit next steps. However, if you have not already done so, please begin working with your eligible entities within your state to revise the data within the smart form or the state database. They'll then export that data into the XML. Once you have your update, revised data in your smart form, 
or database and you export to XML, you will unsubmit the state level module or modules, upload the XML and then resubmit the state level module. OCS will then review the revised data, is submitted, and then accept the modules and grant solutions as the final step. We are hoping to complete all of this by July 31st for all states so that we can proceed with drafting the fiscal year 2020 CSPG report to Congress and include everyone's data within that report. We understand that everyone has a lot on their plates and not necessarily just CSPG, and we will continue to work with you on the submissions and to get us to a place where we are not overlapping on the CSPG reporting. We also ask that you please continue to keep us informed as you're working on your revisions and submissions and never hesitate to ask any of us any questions. We will have a follow-up webinar in early September to provide everyone a status update on the information that I just shared and the next steps and any adjustments to this timeline as we do know that it is a bit tight. As a quick reminder, here are your contacts for the fiscal year 2020 CSPG annual report review. These may be different than your primary CSPG program specialists. We have Vernika Carr for regions one, six, and eight, Andrew Colley for regions two, three, and four, and Catherine Maddox for regions five, seven, nine, and 10. And their information can be found on the federal context page, which was also shared on it within the chat. Thank you very much, everyone. We look forward to seeing you at our next webinar on Wednesday, July 13th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, where we will be providing a refresher on submitting your information to Grant Solutions. Have a great afternoon or evening or the rest of your day. Thank you.